Hey guys, my channel has morphed into sort of a show and tell of the power of God to heal a lifetime of wounds and a lifetime of problems and just human human brokenness. I've had to open up my soul for healing. I, I knew he's been telling me that you can't be keeping secrets and having me work on you. Because if you do, how do I get the glory? I've been asking him to do things that with me that honor him. And it turns out I'm the perfect piece of crap canvas for him to shine up and make it point to him. Because I can't take credit for any of this. This is not me muscling through. I've tried that my whole life and it's only been a failure. And I, I'm walking out of the woods where I just recorded a 30 minute video that was supposed to be five minutes long. But when the spirit comes on me, he, he takes up his, he uses his allotted time in my memory card. Let's put it that way. And, uh, so yeah, I guess I realized that the best way that I could interact with that prayer I asked for was to allow him to make the example of me. Cause I can't think of anybody much worse than me. I mean, if you really knew me, I can't think of anybody much worse than me. I'm crafty. I, I don't have this big criminal record. I got in trouble when I was young and I realized that I had to be very good at concealing the sinister spirit inside of me, which is all demonic. And it's not me. I don't want it anymore. I want it out. I want it out. I don't have that anymore. I don't have the capacity to do evil like I used to. And exposing all of these things prevents me from ever having forever from ever making room for all these demons to come in see demons only live in darkness they're persons without body and they stay in darkness secrecy shame right guilt remorse regret darkness that's the breeding ground and i'm shining light bulbs i'm i'm opening all the doors all the windows no more privacy fence i'm tearing it down I, i'm tearing it down i want you to see the wreckage of my life so that you can see the recovery from this wreckage and I'm walking out of here. I, the video that I just made was about a 40 day fast. I'm on day two. I'm gonna water only fast for 40 days. And if it kills me, it kills me. I know it's gonna hurt. I know I can't do it. I normally fail a fast at about 45 to 50 hours. And, you know, I relent because my reasons have never been this, this high before. So <clears throat> my second spouse who I'm already, my divorce filing is already, our divorce filing is already in at dissolving a disastrous marriage. However, I know for certain that the Lord put us together to fulfill his will and his purpose. Somebody had said, uh, my past, like Bible study leader, almost my pastor in a way, a, a, guy, a guy named Jake. I'm not gonna say his last name for privacy reasons, but a guy named Jake, the day before we were to go to the lawyer for the first time as an uncontested friendly couple looking to co-parent and just exist as good old pals. We were going to the lawyer together on Thursday. He knew that um, Wednesday night Bible study was his last chance to say something because he'd been holding it all in. He knew what was going on in our marriage and he kept, he kept his peace. And he said, I can't keep my mouth shut anymore. He stopped the Bible study right there. And the rest of the night became about my marriage. And a handful of men laid hands on me and prayed over our marriage. And he said, fight for your marriage, fight for your marriage. And I started fighting for my marriage. And I, God zigged and zagged me. I, tr I was trying to stay in the word. And I don't know, only the Lord knows when I was following him and when I was following the devils. I don't know. When was I following my flesh? When was I just folding and giving in to my wants or reacting and blowing up out of my insecurity? I don't know. <clears throat> it was this back and forth, back and forth, back and forth that probably boggled her mind. I, I know it did. It boggled her mind. And she is the one who brought me to Christ. But I am the one who detonated a grenade in our relationship. I'm the one who said in November, last November, like, love me or let me go and find someone who will. Because I wasn't feeling loved. I was working as hard as I could to make her feel loved in the ways that I was told she received. I was doing, I was, I was going 99 miles an hour and it wasn't getting to her. It was like the transfer cable was broken. 
this, that the files were not transferring. She was not feeling love and I was not feeling love. After we've actually completely dissolved our marriage, I know that I truly love her and she truly loves me, but our system was broken. And I have to go on and live my own life. I had to set standards for myself that I will not take her back with the way that she is. I mean, and I'm not telling her change for me either. I cannot accept the relationship that we had ever again. And she cannot accept the relationship we had ever again. I'm changing into what suits the Lord best to use me to do his will. And I am going to have a godly wife, the one that he wants for me, or I'm going to be single until I die. I don't know. Whatever he wants, that's what I'm going to endure. So let it be his will, but not mine. But my spouse who saved me, she saved me by bringing me to the Savior because I knew him and I turned my back and I ran towards sin. And that's how we met. We were both living in sin. We both knew him and we both lived in sin. We both said, don't look at what I'm doing, God. She is trying so hard to get back to him. And I cannot leave her struggling to get back and know it and walk away. I, she's a sister in Christ and I cannot turn my back on her, even though I am the culprit of a lot of her problems. But she's the culprit of a lot of her problems. I can, I can, I can identify, I can listen to her, hear what she's saying, see my role, that she's right, and I can go back and I can own these things, I can apologize, I can say yes, you're right, I did think the worst of you, I did deny you these things that you really did need, I did this, I did that, please forgive me. You're right, you weren't crazy, I was manipulative, I was this, I was that, I had no excuse, I did them, I own them, please forgive me. That's the best that I can do on my end to heal her wounds. She needs Jesus, a close walk, to be really restored. And I can't do that. That's a, that's a Jesus job. So what I can do is deny myself and spend 40 days drinking water, trying not to think about even pickle juice, which I'm going to be craving. I can deny my flesh. I can crucify my flesh. I can deny myself my wants. I can impose discomfort on me for the sake of praying that the Lord would move and act in her situation. Because he's already acted and dealt with me. He's already making my path straight. He's already releasing me and relieving me of all these pains. But there she is in torment, drowning. And I can't run in and save her. That's what I've always tried to do. I can't run in and save her. What I have to do is sacrifice for my, is deny myself for her because that's what she did for me when she told her lawyers that they could not liquidate my assets to pay her i paid for her lawyers i probably said it 10 times in this video because i can't tell when when i push stop and start on recording i can't tell when i don't know if i'm talking to the last video or the next video my head swirls but she restrained herself she denied herself she held back and suffered she picked up her cross by not doing what everyone else does this is the first time that attorney's office had ever seen it. Two people walk in as a couple and hire one lawyer to do an entire divorce where they, they can't, it's not legal to represent two people against each other. You can't do that. So I had to waive my rights to representation. She got 100% representation and they encouraged her to take the assets, which were 100% mine. And she restrained them. She stopped them. She denied herself. Just like Christ got up on that cross the one right in the middle, the tall one, that was built for a murderer named Barnabas, Barabbas, Barabbas. But the Jews wanted him on that one, the worst cross, the one they thought was the dirtiest, the tallest one. They wanted him on that cross. There's a cross that's been built for me and there's one that's been built for you. <clears throat> and somebody who denied themselves a thing that they could have, just sign the paper, just say the words, just say the words, Erica. You can have half his assets. Just say the words. She said, I will not say those words. I will stay and endure this pain out of love for him and for our children. So I'm denying myself out of love for her and for my children. Please pray for me, for my kids, for my spouse, for my, I don't even know if I want to say for my marriage, but just pray for God's will to be done in this situation. And for all of these people to be healed and made whole and complete so that they may spend the rest of their days bringing glory to the kingdom of God. And if any of this strikes a chord with you, if you're going through hard times, 
and you want to see what healing looks like, subscribe. If you need to pour out your heart and make it about you, that's what the comments are for. I've already made it about me. The comments are for you to make it about you. Tell me what you need. Somebody will come and meet you in your needs. That's what God's specialty is. Sending somebody to meet you right there, right there, wherever it is that you fell apart on the side of the road broken. Use, use these comments. I welcome it. Please use them. I love you people. God bless.